And wait, 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 wait. Myrna or Myrna? Pronounce your name for me. It's Myrna. Myrna. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio, podcast, and television show. I'm your host, Life Coach Myrna Young, and sitting in the guest chair is Brian Johnson. So excited to speak to this guest. He has the most fabulous book out called Arte activate your heroic potential and i've been reading it every night and i absolutely love it and when i finish reading it i'm gonna go get the audiobook and listen to it again because it has so many good tips on there so welcome brian myrna thanks for having me here great to see you and I, for those who can see us we're twinning out today this yeah, is twinning out. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit later in the show about Brian's VIP, um, uh, how he sends out his book. So, I mean, it's just such a great experience. So, all right. So let me give you guys a little um, introduction to the book and then an introduction to Brian. So Brian Johnson, founder and CEO of Heroic, a social training platform that Dr. Phil Schutz, subject of the Netflix documentary Schutz, said will change your life. Brian's book, Arte, Activate Your Heroic Potential, generated more than 10,000 pre-orders. It includes a foreword by Dr. Phil Schutz and endorsements from founder and CEO of Whole Foods, John McKay, Cal Newport, Ben Greenfield, and Tal Ben-Shahar. So this, that was the book introduction. Now let me give you an introduction to Brian. So Brian Johnson is an accomplished entrepreneur and philosopher with over 25 years of experience. As the founder and CEO of Heroic, he has successfully raised over $20 million, building and selling two leading social platforms. His Heroic membership and coaching program has impacted tens of thousands globally and our research back to be transformative. He was also featured in the documentary Finding Joe alongside Deepak Chopra and Tony Hawk. All right. Now, I told you I was going to um, tell you about Brian's VIP package before we start the show. So before we get started, I want to tell you guys, those listening on the podcast, you can't really see this, but those who are watching on TV, on in YouTube, you can see that I'm holding this book. And we're twitting out, <laughs> we're both wearing white t-shirts that says Arate on the front of it. But I have never seen such a beautiful book. Oh my gosh. When I opened this book, the cover is amazing. It has this red thing in the middle that I've only ever seen in my Bible. <laughs> and it is such a beautiful experience. I'm a book lover. I've been a book lover since 10. You know, I've got like four books that I, on the, on the side of my bed and, and I listen to books on audio. So I'm a book lover. And this is the most beautiful book that I've ever seen. And the fact that Brian went to so much trouble to create this beautiful reading experience for you guys, you know, you, you know, the inside could have been crap, but the inside is really, really good. <laughs> so he's given us this experience of a pleasurable book to read for book lovers and also really quality information. And in the VIP package, not only comes the book, but two t-shirts. I have a black one like this one <laughs> and a coin with some quotes on it. So that's amazing. So I wanna start off, Brian, by asking you, what made you go ahead and do such a beautiful, oh, by the way, I forgot. He has a YouTube video called The Making of Arte, and it has over 1.4 million views as of today. So the fact that he has a video on how this book was created means that he's very proud of the, the detail that went into this book. So tell us, why did you create such a pleasurable book experience? <laughs> well, first, thank you. Bless you. I appreciate your kind words. And um I appreciate you reflecting back what we hope to um, to have you and anyone who gets the book experience. So it was really important to me that we created a book that had substance, that had meaning, that had depth, and that could hopefully help truly activate people's heroic potential. And then it was also really important to me. I mean, I'm like you, you know, I'm a book lover. I've got a library with thousands of books. 
And I wanted to create something that was beautiful and that was different. You know, just I wanted the weight of it to be different. I wanted you to feel its gravitas yet at the same time be able to open up anywhere, you know, and read a little micro chapter in, in a page or two. Um, and I've got my heroes on the wall, as you know, if, if you know, if you're watching us, you know, I've got heroes behind me. One of my heroes you can't see is Steve Jobs. And uh -huh. one of Steve Jobs' kind of strategic um, endeavors with everything he did was to make it insanely great and just, That's just true. Really beautiful. That's true. You know? His creative <laughs> process was amazing. He wanted beauty. That's amazing. And did anybody tell you you look like him a little bit? Well, you know, I'm looking up at him right now. He, you know, toward the end of his life, we had the same haircut, right? Uh, a little bit of stubble, but I'll, I'll take it. I accept any uh, any opportunity to connect. We'll go with it. Yes, you do. <laughs> mm, okay. All right. Well, yeah. So that's that's kind of the the commitment. And then you know, Rick Rubin has a great book out right now, um, and uh, the Creative Act, and, and that inspired me because I was reading it as I was finalizing my book and making some creative decisions, but. You know, he, you look at his cover, which he designed. It's beautiful. It's minimalist. It's, uh, you know, no dust jacket, hardcover book. It's just a beautiful piece of art. So we wanted that to be that artistry and craft to go through um, every experience. And I really appreciate you celebrating that and reflecting that back. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> yes. All right. So now, so let's get on with the interview and the word. Now, the word is very interesting as well. Um, orate is a Greek word and it means pursuit of excellence in order to fulfill one's purpose. Can you tell our listeners and those watching on TV what that, that word meant to you? Why did you choose it as um, the name of your book? Yes, yeah, so I've had a tattoo on this forearm of orate for years now. And orate is the one word summation of my life's work. And it's also the one word answer the ancient Roman Stoics would give you if you ask them how to live a good life. So, um, you know, as you said, the word directly translated means virtue or excellence, but it has a deeper meaning, something closer to being your best self, expressing your best self moment to moment to moment. Um, and it, it's that's how you live a great life. That's how you live a life of deep purpose and meaning. And as you know, in the book, I use a, a, a story with my son to kind of explain the idea of arte. And the way I like to frame it up is in any given moment, you're capable of being a certain version of yourself. And I like to draw a line with my hand at about my eye height. And if in that moment, instead of being who you could be, there's a gap, you know, like a foot below, there's another line and, and there's a gap between who you could have been and who you're actually being. It's in that gap in which regret, anxiety, disillusionment, you know, depression exists. And when you close that gap, you're living with arte. And there's no room for all of that negative stuff. Um, and that's the essence of um, the book. It's the essence of my life's work. We train coaches to bring this you know, wisdom to the clients that they work with. And uh, I actually had a longer title. And I realized, no, no, no. It's a single word. This is it. Yeah, no one knows how to pronounce it. Yeah, no one knows how to spell it. But you should. You know, this word never should have left our cultural vernacular. It, it was the dominant theme of the ancient Greco-Roman world. And um, I'm excited to, you know, help bring it to people that are interested in it and um, help people live with more integrity to their highest selves. It's true. That's great. You're right. Like I, I told you before we started recording, I had to go on YouTube to hear you say the word <laughs> so I can come on here and not mess it up <laughs> because you, know. you naturally want to say something totally different. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Now, um, so what does it mean to know your ultimate game of life, and how can we excel at it starting today? Now, one of the things about I love about your book is the fact that I mean, it doesn't say anywhere on your bio that you know your your publicist sent me, but I know I saw it. I think I heard you and talking about it on on Facebook or somewhere that it has like three hundred and forty seven or somewhere around that number of actionable steps that you can take, right? So as I go through those little micro chapters, um, I'm finding so much information. But one of the things that I'm really, really impressed with, 
Brian, is that every one of those chapters starts off by talking about a book. So right off, did you read all those books? <laughs> I've read a few books, but nice. yeah. So and I've spent <laughs> half of the last 25 years building and selling a couple businesses and the other half reading and writing and oh thinking. So I've created something called Philosopher's Notes in the Heroic App, where I've distilled into like mini Cliff's notes or like uh, spark notes kind of things, you know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 20 summaries of almost 650 books, all the best ancient wisdom and modern science and self development books. Um, so the book has 451 micro chapters. Okay. I, I thought it was three something, right? Yeah, yeah, no, okay. it, it's 451 degrees to activate a fire. Um, and so the idea is, look, if you want to start a fire, you got to hit activation energy point, which is 451 degrees. So there are 451 little micro chapters. And I think I feature like way over 200 different books um, and 200 different authors and even more um, books. Uh, but yeah, you know, I've spent a lot of time trying to understand what all of the best teachers across all cultures, across all time say, and they all say the same thing, which is. The purpose of life is to be your best self in service to something bigger than yourself. You know, yes. we can talk about how to do that and what that means, but that's universal and science affirms that. And then the question is, all right, well, how do we go about doing that? Yeah. And that's what coaching helps you with. But before we move on, I want to, I want to, you know, let you know something because it's always good to get good feedback. Right. Um, so like you said, like every chapter you give a different book. And we all know that you're guided by what resonates with you. So of course, I'm not going to go read all those books, but something you said in one of the chapters, you talk about the sun and how the sun is 93 million miles away or whatever. And I'm not sure what about that statement arrested me. And then you said, you talked about Michael Singer's book, Living Untethered. And then I said, you know, but I have read the what is it the sold and tether he's got another book that i've read so i went and i looked for that book and i listened to it in audible and i'm listening to it again because that is one of the most powerful books <laughs> so yeah that's the one that i've read that you recommended that i went and i got but yeah and then i'm making notes and there's one chapter in there about the four second rule. And I'm going to actually do a podcast on that because um, I think that that's great how you talk about if you just do four, four, four seconds more every time, then you will go from, you know, you know, running, um, uh, walking to running a marathon because you just increase by four seconds. So those are just two of the ones that I want to mention. But um, do you want to circle back on that before we move on? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I love I love the resonance. Like you said, you know, it, different ideas will resonate with different people. And, and um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm hopeful that, that different ones will res resonate with different people. And in aggregate, um, they can make a significant difference in people's lives. So I love that you highlighted those ones. Yes, right. Okay, awesome. So the question that I had is um, the ultimate game of life. You call this, this book about the ultimate game of life. So what is one secret that we can excel at starting today? I know there's 451, but if you were to give someone a starting point, what would you tell them to start with? Yeah, well, in that context, the book has seven objectives. So the first objective is you got to know the ultimate game. And the reality is most of us have been seduced to play the wrong game. We're going after the extrinsic stuff. We think that the extrinsic stuff by itself will make us happy. The fame, the wealth, the hotness, all that stuff. But the reality is science is unequivocal, ancient wisdom agree. Not that that stuff isn't important, but we wanna focus on being a better person, deepening relationships and making a contribution. And that's a 2,500 year old challenge and truth. So just getting that is important. Um, but the thing I think I, I'm most excited about that I think is most practically relevant is um, the second objective in which I talk about forging anti-fragile confidence. It's kind of becoming more and more my thing that some elite performers that I work with come to me to talk more about. It's actually my newest tattoo, holiday gift to myself, New Year's gift, anti-fragile confidence, where when life hits you, you get stronger. You don't break, not even resilient, you actually use it as fuel to get stronger. So Nassim Taleb says that the wind, your life's challenges, the wind will extinguish a candle, but it fuels a fire. So we want to this That's fire true. of power to be able to handle whatever life throws at us. 
Um, and that's a big part of, of what we help people do um, in the book. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Now, yes, you're right. You do have seven objectives and you, you talk about them all. The other question I have here is one of the objectives um, is, um, you know, in, a, in Arate is bravery. So what role does courage play in overcoming life's obstacles? It's huge. I mean, in the ancient world, they had four, um, in, in ancient world being all ancient wisdom and faith traditions, four cardinal virtues, wisdom, discipline, love, and courage. So courage um, is the willingness to act in the presence of fear. We're all always going to have moments in which we feel fear. That's, that's normal and healthy. The question is, what do you do in those moments? So, uh, you know, again, the ancient root of the word courage comes from the same word as, as uh, heart. So your heart pumps blood to your arms and legs and vital organs. Well, courage is the virtue that vitalizes all the other virtues. If you aren't willing to act in the presence of fear, you're going to have a really, really hard time activating your heroic potential and showing up as powerfully as you want. So building the skill to do that, you know, is absolutely essential. And of course, we talk about that a lot more in the book as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, the one of the defining moments of my life is when I had to face down fear and um, and, and and get my courage. And I will tell you that it, that opened up so many things for me. I mean, on the, on the flip side of that is becoming a life coach, because, yes, once you once you have the courage to walk into the fire <laughs> and you you come out on the other side it it opens up your personality and it opens up and lets you recognize that, that that you can do this you know when you back down from it you're always going to be backing down so so that's amazing all right so um how do we find the the best most heroic version of ourselves yeah um well first is is opening up to the possibility that there is a best next best most heroic version of you and and one of the things i like to talk about is you know you're the hero we've been waiting for and and my favorite hero is the person looking back at you in the mirror you know we each need to step up and do the hard work to forge the strength to go out and make a difference in the world um but i think that's the most important starting point and and this is you mentioned the fact that i'm in a documentary called finding joe and i i i happen to be in it but i love it i've watched it myself like a dozen times it's so good and it's all about Joseph Campbell and the, the hero's journey. So Joseph Campbell influenced George Lucas, who, of course, created Star Wars. All great movie makers based their whole storytelling on Joseph Campbell's hero's myth. So in the reason when we watch these movies, we watch a great sports game or, or anyone doing something against the odds. Why, one of the reasons why we find it so inspiring is they're just showing us what's possible. So the hero you watch in a movie is just reflecting what you're capable of. Um, so I think that's the most important thing is, is starting from that place. And then there are two ways I like to approach it to get more clarity on what that might look like in your life. The first is a scientific exercise called the best selves diary. So the exercise goes something like this. Imagine yourself five years from now. And you've worked hard. You've integrated the ideas that you've learned on Myrna's, Myrna's podcast and other books and stuff like that. And you're doing the work, you know, and you're not perfect, but you're getting a little bit better day in and day out. What would your life look like in five years if you were living a life of real deep purpose and meaning and joy and you felt energized and productive and connected to your loved ones? Imagine your life in five years. Now, that's a hard thing to do for most people because they haven't spent a lot of time doing it. So then I say, perfect, turn off Netflix for a while, turn off Instagram for another 15, 30 minutes a day and spend some time thinking about that. When you do that, you start getting more clarity on what you aspire to do and who you aspire to be. And then another way to get clarity is look back in the past and think, at a think of a time in your life when you were on and things were just working for you really, really well. We've all had it, whether it was a day or a week or a month or a year or even a decade. So then we connect the two. And we look back and see, well, what were you doing when you're at your best? What do you need to start doing now so you can make that future you a reality? Those are some of the ways that, that we like to frame it up um, that we have found people to really respond well to. Yeah. And as you were talking, I remember what I mentioned a minute ago, but that four, that four second stretch, that if you stretch yourself 
four seconds. Is it four? Is it four minutes, right? What is it exactly? <laughs> so if you get 4% better, 4% better, 4% better. And you do that enough times, you're doing the impossible, basically. But right, you got right. to do it incrementally, you know? Yes, I love that. Yeah. So that's basically what you're saying. That if you um, spend a time... Now, Byron Katie has this book that's called The Work. And um, it's one of her best books. And um, I've read it. And uh, basically what she's saying is that we all have to do the work and we all have to ask ourselves these questions and 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 find out about you know what what you want to do is it is what you're thinking is it true that kind of thing and um but you can also do that by visualization which is what i do you know i'm a i'm a big visualization person even though i don't really see pictures i am um, i think about it in my mind and yes there um there's one visualization that says you know, 20 years down the road, what are you going to, what are you going to look like? What are you going to be wearing? What are you going to be doing? That kind of thing. So that's one way to stretch yourself, I think. Right. Don't you agree? Yeah. And just get clarity on, on who you aspire to be. And then most importantly, what are you going to do in order to get there? Um, but yeah, that's, that's, I think, um, all part of the process of, uh, getting more deeply connected to that best version of yourself. Yes. Right. Right. True. True. Now, I want to circle back a little bit. Now, you mentioned talking to your son about here and here, but the story that grabbed my attention was actually your very first story in the book, which you're telling your 10-year-old son um, that the voice in his head tells him not to, that he was not going to be good enough to win a tournament and he didn't want to go. And I think that you started off with that story because it is a story that, a lot of people tell themselves, you know, they back down because they don't want to be embarrassed by failure. So can you address that? And what was the purpose of you putting it there? Is that the whole premise of um, of the book? Not yeah, the whole premise, I, I, but one of them, right? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you again bringing that, bringing back ideas from the book, but I had written the entire book. So the entire book was done except the introduction. Right. And it's like, how do I introduce this? It's a weird word. It's an ancient. How do I make this like easy to understand and palatable and and, um, and fun and applicable and all that? And then as it turns out, one Saturday morning, my son's really into chess, as you know, and I talk about it in the book. Um, mm -hmm. He's 10 years old at the time. He's now 11. And he had a tournament that he had signed up for. He was excited about Then he wasn't. Because it was going to be against harder players because the better he gets, the harder opponents he plays. So he's not winning all the time now, you know, and that isn't as fun as winning all the time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm excited because we have so much fun on these tournament days. And I come out of the office in the morning. I'm always doing a little bit in the morning, but I stop early and I'm like, all right, buddy, let's go. And he's like, Meh, I don't want to go, you know, like wilted flower. Like, no, nah, I don't want to go. What do you mean, buddy? What, what's going on? Oh, I don't know. And I'm like, all right, well, let's go on a walk. We got a little trail on our property here, you know? And I'm walking out the door and mom's like, hey, you guys should talk about the fact that he, he doesn't want to go because he's afraid he's going to lose. And so it just became this, this perfect context. So I go on a walk with him, you know? And I talk about all the things we're talking about. And, you know, of course you're not going to win, dude. Like you're playing against great players, but you want to learn something and that's part of the process. And, and then we use it as an opportunity to talk about those voices we all have in our heads who are telling us things that don't support us doing the things that will help us eventually achieve the things that are important to us. So it just felt like a really beautiful way to take a hard, complex idea and break it down. And the chapter's called Explain It to Me Like I'm 10. You know, so it came yeah. that context and um, felt like a really um, a nice way to both explain it, establish my humanity and, and bring you into my family. And, and um, you know, it was just a, a fun way to um, to get going. Yeah, it was, you know, and it resonated with me <clears throat> because I know we all have voices and listen, your voices, in fact, I mean, I've got to study that more, but there's someone that was saying there's five voices in your head and you've got to discern which ones to listen to. But those voices are always telling you that you're not good enough. You can't do something. You're going to lose, you're, whatever. And um, I love what you told them, that if you ever listen to them, you're never going to get anywhere in life, <laughs> especially the ones they don't tell you, oh, yeah, you're going to crush it. <laughs> They're always telling you that, no, you're going to fail and, and, and don't do it. 
and those type of things. So, and it happens not only in, you know, something like a tournament or whatever, it happens in relationships. People sabotage their relationships because there's voices in their head are telling them that it's not going to work out kind of thing. So it was a perfect way for you to start the book off, grab someone's attention and, um, and introduce that if you're ever going to be successful in life, you've got to, you know, not listen to those voices, whether it's several or one or whatever. So that's, that was, that's amazing. I loved it. It resonated with me. And, um, and then the end of the story <clears throat> Is your your son actually went to the tournament? Did he win, or did he bring second? Or I don't remember, but he did go. We win or we learn. We win or we learn. I don't remember how many games he won, but it may be like two wins, two learn. You know, but uh, yeah, we had a great day. And, and but again, yes. the the win there was going. The win was stepping through that fear door, as I like to say, having the courage to go do it, even though he felt afraid. Like that's the win. When mm -hmm. we're stretch ourselves and just do our best with whatever we have then then we can learn and i literally yes. i just got off of a, a conversation where i was interviewing um a guy named lanny basham who wrote a book called with winning in mind gold medal winning um rifle shooter who's developed a system for mental toughness mm -hmm. um and it's important as we all know to control that inner dialogue but the question is are you doing that or are you letting that negative voice take over and then run the show over and over again and you do that enough and, and you lose self-trust and your self-image gets diminished and it's very, very, very difficult to ever outperform a low self-image. So we've got to get, you know, more control over that um, inner voice and then more, most importantly, do the things that allow us to cultivate trust with ourselves and um, 4%, 4%, 4%, as you were saying. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> um, all right. So um, you mentioned that there's four objectives in your seven objectives in your book. Do you want to like, you know, run them off right now? Yeah, let's go. So objective number one, we talked about a little bit. You got to know the ultimate game. Objective number two, we talked about a little bit. You got to forge anti-fragile confidence. You got to know it's supposed to be hard. Objective number three, we simplify self-development into what we call the big three. Energy, work, and love. You get those right, you have a great life. Objective four make today a masterpiece not someday today <laughs> objective five is master yourself there's an art and science of behavioral change that i'm passionate about um, installing and deleting habits and then objective six is dominate the fundamentals eating moving sleeping breathing and focusing your mind and then objective seven is when you do all those things you activate what i call your superpower which is gandhi called it Martin Luther King quoted him in his I Have a Dream speech, soul force. Soul force is the quality that, that they tried to create within their communities. Um, it's what all of our heroes have in common. It's what we have when we're at our best. Um, so that's objective seven, which is a byproduct of the prior six. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. <clears throat> And I think the coin, I should have had it with me, but the, the coin that you sent with the book has those objectives on it, correct? <laughs> the coin actually has the virtues. So the coin has the virtues. The virtues, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. most highly correlated with your well-being. Wisdom, discipline, love, courage, and then gratitude, hope, curiosity, and zest. Okay, uh, that's amazing. This is so amazing. All right, so um, <clears throat> as, we, as we wrap up, now... Um, what else can listeners discover in your new book, Orate, like that we haven't covered that you wanna that you wanna, you know, highlight? Well, we maybe covered like ten or fifteen of the four hundred and fifty-one big ideas. So we got a lot there. But what do I think they might enjoy? Um, I think what I'm excited about it is it, it it there's a broad range of ideas that you can kind of get in and get out on. Um, some of the feedback I'm most excited about, uh, kids you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kids who their parents get it, they start reading, they love it. So there's a, a certain approachability to it. Um, that is one of the things that makes me most excited about the book. But if any of the ideas that we've talked about resonate, then I think you might like it. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah. And, um, and, and what I like about it is the, the, the small chapters and every chapter has something, a workable action that you can do. So and I love it because you're right. If you were to incorporate, you know, let's say 10% of those, then you're definitely building a fire, you know, increasing your energy, increasing your thoughts, 
<clears throat> changing your mind on about certain things. So I, 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 I actually love the book. So thank you so much for um, sending me a copy. Thank you so much for my beautiful t-shirt. Uh, and <laughs> Thanks for having me and, on. I like connecting. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right. Well, you um, tell us about your, you also have um, a coaching practice and, and, and things like that, which is, based, yeah, you are the CEO of Heroic and I, you've got a, a coaching platform that you, you coach, you teach coaches and, and every, and um, all up on other people. So you want to talk about that, talk about how um, our listeners can connect with you and your website. Yeah. So um, the book is Arte, of course, you can get that wherever you get books. And then the, the website and the app is called Heroic. So you can find Heroic in your iOS and Android app stores to search Heroic. We're the training platform. Um, and then uh, Heroic.us is the website. But we've got a lot of content and a lot of practical tools. And then we also train coaches. So we've had 10,000 people go through our coach certification program um, from 100 different countries around the world. It's been scientifically proven, as has the app, to change people's lives. Um, we're really proud of that. And uh, we've always got a new cohort starting soon, um, but that's that's the basic idea. Um, we're uh, you know inspired by what we're doing and and committed to making a difference in the world. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm almost want to stay one step at a time, one person at a time, four <laughs> percent at a time. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I love it. All right. Well, listen, Brian. I know that you're very busy. I wanted to make sure this was nice and succinct, and we got the message across. Um, thank you for um, what you do and um, yeah, changing the world, you know, one person at a time. Um, uh, you're, you're a great influence for your son. I'm sure that he's going to grow up to be, you know, someone special um, because he's got a dad that's, you know, making a difference. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to the Transform Your Mind, to Transform Your Life. This is what I want to bring you, you know, um, special guests like Brian here that can help you to live your best life. And as he talked about, you've got to put into work. You, you know, um, you got to face those fears. You've got to get rid of the voices in your head. And, uh, you know, you you get a book like Arate and um, the chapters are small. They're like two pages. And you can, you can actionize, you know, several different things that you want to. Like I said, I've been reading the book and every every chapter has got a book. And, um, you know, I'm going to read several of those books, but I'm, I, I picked up the one that, um, that had the most interest because I'm interested in the quantum field and I'm interested in consciousness and I'm interested in when he talked about the sun. I mean, I wanted to know those things. So that's the, the book that I'm, I'm listening to um, on Audible and I'm reading this one. And, and Michael Singer is, you know, the Living on Tethered is amazing. So yes, um, and I love, uh, um, Brian, that you're a book lover and you read because reading, hey, that's how you grow. <laughs> Everything you need is in a book. You've got to love books. And um, you guys could start with this one. So um, any last words, Brian, before we wrap up? Thank you. I appreciate you. And um, thank you for all that you do. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, guys, if you're listening to this on iTunes, we'd love for you to... Oh, you have a podcast too, right? Do you want to talk about that? I think I do. Yeah, I do. We, we got a YouTube channel, all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. Brian Johnson, Hero. You can find the podcast too. Thanks. Yes, yes. So yeah, if you guys want to know some more information and listen to all this information, um, yes, you can definitely go and check out Brian's podcast. I will have a link in the show notes to his book and his social media, his website, and also um, his podcast. So you guys can head over to the show page, which is blog.myhelps.us um, for a transcript for my conver of our conversation in case you missed something and also the links. So yes, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button because every week I bring you quality guests like Brian so that you can transform your mind and transform your life. So thanks again for tuning in. Thank you, Brian, for a wonderful, informative interview. And I will enjoy continuing reading my book. I'm only a quarter way through it. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> All 
All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, bye, Brian. Until next time. Namaste. Bye. Thank you.